Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? My question for this week, before I go any further, is which spreader, or not which spreader, do you want me to do a little bit with the Marshall spreader? The MS-105, the barrel spreader, which kicks it all out to one side. Um, if you do or if you don't, head to the comments section, let me know your thoughts. It's your vote, it's your game. Now then, while we're here in the mods section, we want to go to baling technology. And we're doing some baling today with the little baler. You guys all wanted me to use the little baler rather than the big one. A couple of you said the big baler, so we might use that next week. So we're going to get that trailer and that baler. There we go. And I'm going to pull them today on the Lindner Geotrack 94. And I believe the Lindner Geotrack 94 is a... Oh, it's not a 94 horsepower tractor. Of course it isn't, it's a 102 horsepower tractor. I would have thought that would have been a 94 horsepower. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. We have the Lindner Geotrack, it's over 100 horsepower this tractor, so it should have no problem pulling a baler that can be pulled around by a 35 horsepower tractor. And for those of you who are wondering, uh, no, I haven't actually done it personally, but I have seen a small conventional baler being pulled by a Massey 35. So 35 horsepower tractor, so it is entirely possible. Now what I'm thinking is we will do a bit with the trailer on the back and we will do a bit with just leaving the bales in the field. Um, we didn't get to do very much of this in old times, so I'm quite looking forward to being able to do a bit more. The back of that baler is a little bit heavy, which is why it was leaning back like that. There we go. Let's hitch this one on. Perfect. And, oh no, I don't do that. I'll do that. There we go. And I'll hitch the bait, the uh, the bale trailer on as well. We've got to try and get it round that corner. Then we will take it out onto the road and round into the field. Now remember, I do have to keep stopping for um, problems that we had with the game crashing. And if it crashes at any point, I will tell you, and we will see if we can figure out what may have caused it. Uh, so I want to hitch that one on, and we don't have anything to any PTO shaft or anything on there. Right then, let's go in cab for this little bit. I haven't really looked at this one in cab yet, have I? Uh, it's all fairly standard, I think. I'm assuming that that one down there is the gear stick, is it? I don't know, hang on, have we got a... Well, there isn't a mount for a um, front loader, but we got two joysticks here. Why have we got two joysticks? I'm all confuddled. I have no idea. Oh, hang on, what's this? Uh, I can't zoom into that, unfortunately. So I can't quite see it. High, low. Right, so that down there is the gear stick. If you look at that little picture, that one's the gear stick. So what this one is, I'm not really sure. I really don't know. I'm assuming it's for something. Well, duh, Frith. What do you, what do you expect? It's got to be for something. Um... But what? I'm not really sure. It is one of the great mysteries of life as to what that thing is. Right, so that's our baler interface. We'll go on to that one first. Now, I want to come out round a big bit because obviously we've got the, oops, got the trailer on as well. I'm going all over the place at the moment. So we will do a trailer full, I think, uh, pulling it behind the baler. And then after that, what I'd like to do is um, just leave some bales in the field as they are. Purely because I'd just like to see it. So let's unfold the baler out here because I'm going to go around that corner quite sharp to start with. So that pushes out. It pushes the trailer back so that it can fasten on that one. And it straightens it out. Now, I don't think that this one comes out anywhere near far enough. But... We'll go with what we've got. So let's start the baler up. That should, when you press, oh no. I want to lower the pickup down as well. There we go. And that should be ready to go. We'll get a warning come up if it's not ready to go. I've got quite a wide swath here. Because this is where we attempted to do a little bit of combining with that, um, the foldable header if you remember and it didn't work very well, did it? In fact, that was utterly hopeless, that one was. Right. 
Okay, let's see if I can do a little bit in cab. I don't know how well it's going to work. I do like the animation on the front. That I am pleased with. I don't like that the baler isn't far enough over. If you have a look, it shouldn't be sort of straight like that. Or at least the balers that I used to use, they weren't like that. It would have been angled a lot more. So the machine would have been properly over to the side of your wheels. And you wouldn't have had to drive on the crop. You would have driven beside the crop. Uh, like you do with the side mounted mower. This one is almost trailing. And it's just not in the right position at all. It just feels wrong. Feels absolutely wrong. Right, now I got to come round this corner quite sharp, actually. And we will, if we have a look in a minute, have the first bale coming out the back. Here it goes. And I've just gone round way too far. I have to back up a little bit so I can straighten up. There. Let's come up here. There we go. This tractor's not having any trouble at all pulling this. So there's the bale on the back. There it goes. Right. Oh, hang on. I know what I haven't done. I haven't actually started up because you've got to start the uh, bale trailer. So we go, yeah, work position. It's got to go into work position. So if I change it to work position, it's now auto stacking. And I can turn that off and I'll go back to the baler now. So I'll just stay out of cab just a second while we watch the next bale come off and see where it comes off. I don't need that. Not for a minute, anyway. There we go. Right, so it's actually, and I'm driving right into the hedge now. I'm not going to have much choice. I'm go I've got to drive into the hedge a little bit. Um, it's throwing the trailer right into the hedge. That's not very good. Okay, now we will continue on trying to do it from in cab and this time now that we're going a bit faster do you remember i actually altered the amount that goes into these bales because originally when you download this baler it puts the bales at 2000 liters per bale which i thought was a bit much considering that the big bale is 4000 liters and normally you'd expect to get 10 to 12 little bales out of a big bale so you know really i should be doing these at 500 each um minimum but I thought, well, we'll do it at a thousand, um, because obviously the game is not completely um, true to real life at all points. It's a bit difficult to try and steer. It's because you've got to keep doing this. And in real life, you do. You can sort of put your head here, and you can turn it a bit that way, and you can turn it a bit that way. You spend a lot of time watching the back, and then you just occasionally glance to the front to make sure you're still going in the right direction. But it does make it a little bit difficult doing it like this. Now the big question is getting up that hill and I think I'm going to have to leave a chunk of the straw there and we'll have to pick that up by going the opposite direction in a little while. And before I start going up that hill though, I'm just going to come out to here. This is as far out as I'm going to go and we will come back the other way to get that. Before I start going up there, I'm going to save all of my progress just in case we get a nasty game crash in a minute. And we're back. Right, this time I'm going to go out of cab while we go up this hill because I want to see what it looks like. And I think it's going to look pretty fan schmabulous as always. But then I am very easily impressed with a lot of the machinery, as you probably notice. Um, I did actually have someone comment a little while ago. Um, go on, go faster. He didn't say that. He said, I don't know why you bother to give us your opinion on something, Frith, because we know that everything you see is going to be absolutely awesome um not everything i'm very fussy when it comes to mods i like them to be realistic i like them to be believable and i do mark down heavily on anything that i don't think is believable this i think is believable the auto load stuff is quite handy um it's not 100 percent believable but you could imagine that you've actually got a person in that trailer who's hand stacking the bales that is believable, and I know this because I've actually done it. Um, although, I only ever did it once straight off the back of the baler. I know that that's quite a common practice in the States. Um, not so common here in the UK. Um, you generally have them left in piles in the field, either with a flat eight or... Uh, what was... Oh! Yeah, I remember now. Um, 
This baler doesn't actually have a speed limiter on it, so you can just bomb around the field as fast as you like. That is not realistic, and it does lose a point for that. Uh, the colours are a little flat, so it loses a colour for that, but generally, it's a well-made mod. Um, I don't have too many complaints about this one, especially considering there is maybe one or two other mods that are able to do small bales, and most of which aren't very good. Um, so, yeah, this, this is the best small bale mod that I have been able to find. And I'm really, really hoping that someone for FS17 is able to do a much better mod for us. Because I would love to see a better quality uh, small baler. And in particular, I would like to see a sledge that can go behind. Well, in the UK, we use flat eight sleds. And I think it, you do something similar in the US, uh, although generally the ones that I've seen aren't sleds, they're trailers and the bales sort of go up in the air and then they're left in flat 10s or 12s or even 14s or 18s. Um, you seem to have quite big sleds over there. Whereas here in the UK, it trails on the ground and the bales are dragged on the ground and not put onto a table. Um, and then once you reach 8, the gate automatically springs open and you're left with your bales in the field. Um, certain parts of the country, you can't really use them very well because you know, the very stony ground, it doesn't work very well because of the um, the strings getting cut on the bales and so they generally do something a little bit different in those parts of the world, in oh, those parts of this country. But where I'm from, a flat eight sled always used to be the thing. Everybody would use it. These days, of course, you hardly see small bales anywhere except for uh, farmers that grow hay for horses then small bales are still reasonably popular. But generally, you don't see much in the way of small bales anymore, um, which is a little bit of a shame. I know there's an outfit in Sweden, I think it is, whose video i seen on YouTube, and um, they had a, a full hay harvest, and they had several small balers uh, going, I think it was two, maybe even three small balers, and they also had some small bale collectors. So they would leave the bales just in a row in the field and the small bale collectors would just go along round the field collecting them all up and it was really really cool it was it was fantastic to watch it was just mesmerizing um and they did the whole thing but they did it a little bit different to how we do it in the uk they did the bales uh, probably half the length to what i'm used to we tend to go for quite a big long bale whereas they did quite short ones which made it very easy for when they came to stacking the bales away they would just use a pitchfork and you know the older ones that uh, you don't generally get them anymore with just two prongs on them um, for what you would have used years ago for forking hay and straw around um, they used one of those and then they could throw the the bales of hay around with ease and uh, stack them all away into the shed so they just unloaded with the automatic bale collectors and the bale collectors those things on their own are worth looking up um, you look up small bale collector when you get a chance on youtube and it is it's just absolutely fascinating it really is i love those videos of the small bale. i'd love to be able to use one as well that would be fantastic right we are getting to that point again i am going to save all of my progress so that i don't lose anything and then i'm going to carry on for a little while and put a few more bales into this trailer and then i will come back to you because we're gonna, I think we could end up just putting it all into this one tray, into this one trailer. Well, I'm up to 80 bales, and the Chrome Chrome Emsland is only at 32% full. So we're gonna fit everything into the trailer, and what I'm thinking is we will fit everything into the trailer, and I will use this baler again over there after we put the CR10 to good use. Um, but what I'll do is I will modify the bales ever so slightly once more so that we get more bales out of the field uh, just how much modification i'll do i'm not quite sure but i have seen uh, quite a while ago now a video very briefly of someone who had modified it so that the bales were 10 units each um that was interesting the bales were pouring out of the baler and that was on a big bale as well so it was just like a, just a mass of big bales it was just a, huge great big long lines of them it was it was quite funny to watch 
Um, so I might, might do something like that just to see what happens, just for uh, giggles. <laughs> Could be an interesting thing to do next week as we are abandoning the realms of complete realism next week so that could be something interesting to do but another thing I wanted to point out this baler it seems to have a pickup that magically goes right out the other side of it um, it looks almost to me like someone has seen a small baler and not quite understood how they should work properly and as so has made a best fit and at least that's what it appears to me um, just because of the way that this machine is operating and the way that we're having to drive on the crop at all times if I'm wrong um, I apologize if there's a different reason that it's um, pickup is like it is I apologize I don't mean any offense by this but this is what it's appearing to me at the moment um, just because of the way that the machine is operating so what we'll do is we'll just grab a couple more little bits here um, if I can, if I can get it to do it. Then we will stop and we will empty out the baler. So those bales go into the trailer as well. And then we'll drive it all back down to the farm. So let me just come up here. Pull over and stop the baler right now. I believe it's O that we pressed to one. Yes, there we go. Let's put all of those in there. That puts the Elmsland, Emsland, I should say. 39.6%. So... How many bales does that trailer hold? Lots, I would say. <laughs> lots and lots. We'll fold that one up. We don't need to worry about the bale trailer. See, it does fold up a little bit. But, you know, the, the travel position is right. I just think the field position is wrong. It doesn't... It, it just doesn't feel like um, it's been done correctly. But while we travel along the road, because we've got a trailer that is centre to the left of our machine we do have to be very conscious of that while we're traveling along so we've got to be out a lot further than we would normally be and i'm probably going to wallop that speed camera anyway i have just walloped the speed camera um there aren't that many people who would be sad to see me wallop a speed camera though so we don't need to worry too much about that incidentally one place that i worked we used to have a speed camera just at the top of the hill from us and um, we all knew it was there, but it used to catch quite a lot of people because it was at the bottom of a hill, and um, so people, you know, they just weren't ready for the speed camera. They got had by it several times. Um, you know, it, it was a busy speed camera. One person who lived nearby got a little bit upset. He actually worked on a farm, one of the neighbouring farms. He got a bit upset about this. Now, we all knew who did it, okay? Everyone knew. But no one knew. When the police came to say, um, what do you know about this? No, I don't know anything about that, sir. Because, you know, we, we all knew who did it, but obviously there's no proof. And, yeah, you, you don't go making wild accusations to the police unless you have absolute concrete evidence. So we didn't know. Now, I'm just going to go here and I want to change to that one. Uh, work position HUD on there. Is that what I want? 245 bales it takes. Right, I don't want the HUD. I want to empty it. How do I empty it? Maybe it doesn't want me to empty it into the silo. Um, work position. Right, oh, that's because it was full. Right, no side chosen. Unload. Center. Ah, I see. So if I unload here, I think it just unloads onto the bale. Oh, onto the trailer. And then what does it do? Let's try that a minute. Choose unloading side first. Okay, so I'm going through the buttons and pressing what we've got. And so I want to put it on that side. And then if I press unload, that will drop all the bales in a heap right there. We are now going to try and turn round. Um, if I can. And I need to find somewhere to put this rig. I'll tell you what, I'm going to leave this all hooked up because we're going to be using it in another episode in that field right there. So in a couple of episodes time. So what I will do is I will drive this all up here into the sugar beet field. And I'll put it up out the way in case I need to, well I won't be doing the CR10 here. I'll have to pull the CR10 into the field to um, get the header onto it. So it means we're going to squish some of the crop, but we'll have to live with that. So we'll park that one right there. Now... 
I'm going to go and get the JCB with the bucket on and we'll see if we can put some of that straw into the mix feeder. I don't know if it will accept bales, so that's the first thing we're going to find out. Right, we'll drop the pallet forks here, get the bucket on, and now we can see if we can put the bales in. If we can, it means that we're going to have to go and buy a mix feeder so that we can drop the bales into the... because we know that the mix feeder works. So we can drop the bales into the mix feeder and then from that transfer them into the the mix feeder that we've got. I don't know how many bales we can pick up. We ought to be able to pick up several bales, I would have thought, with this bucket because it's quite a big bucket. Especially compared to the bucket that we had on our BM Volvo. And that reminds me, I did recently... Um, I won't say when and I won't say where because the person who owns it has requested the utmost privacy um, and I don't blame him because he has got a magnificent machine um, he had a BM Volvo a working BM Volvo on his farm and he invited me to come and take a look at it I took a look I've got some photos for my own personal collection I have agreed not to share those photos on any social media so unfortunately I can't show you the um, the BM Volvo, but I did see it in action. It was working. He's got a couple of buckets there that he uses, a few other bits and pieces, and he had it from brand spanking new. He's had it for many, many years. The thing looked amazing. It was in immaculate condition. Now, obviously, it had some rust in that on it because it's a very old machine, and it's still working. That's the main issue, the main point. It's a fully working machine. And it does the day-to-day -day da tasks of a front-loader machine there on his farm. Um, I just thought that was an absolutely incredible thing to see. Now, oh, it is. Oh, wait a minute. I'm getting a cash sound, but I'm not getting cash. So I'm assuming that it has just put the straw in there so it does work. We can actually put the bales in there with this one. Oh, I've still got one left in there. I don't imagine we'll be able to put them in here. Although I do want to find out. Uh, which side do I go to do this? I would assume that I go down here. But I don't think I can tip it. Let's have a look. Go forward a little bit. Oops. Now if I extend the boom out as far as it will go. Which isn't very far with this thing. I'm going to break anything. Come out bales. Right, no. I didn't expect it to, really. Let's pull that one back in. We'll back out. Right, so my question for this week is, do you want me to use the barrel rotor spreader? Which is... Let me just go find it. That one there. Do you want me to use that one at some point next week just to take a quick load up and spread it on the field so you can see the thing in action? Uh, if you do, or if you don't, head to the comment section down below let me know what you think. It's your vote. It's your game. Now, I won't put any more straw in for now. I'll just go and park this one up. Um, but yes, if you do ever get the chance to see one of those BM Volvos working in real life, do go and take a look at it because uh, the model that we used on our machine in old times was very, very accurate. That machine, it was, it was quite something to be able to look at it. Um, and it was a great privilege to be trusted to go and see it um obviously something as old as that does have quite a bit of value to it um and uh yeah so i it was a great honor to be able to go and see that thing working i was absolutely privileged and if you do ever get a chance to go to an agricultural show or something like that and you see one working um take a good look at it and at agricultural shows you'll be able to take pictures and stuff as well so if i do find one somewhere else that isn't on someone's private property and i'm allowed to take pictures i will get someone i will put them on twitter for you but um that's all i've got time for today i will next week be doing we'll be using the cr10 up in that field up there and the eco variant for uh taking the corn um what else was i going to do Oh, the Beast Pack over in Field 9. We'll see if we can do that for a bit. And I've got some spreading to do with the rotor spreader if you guys want me to. I'm going to try and do some baling as well with that one. I will modify the size of the bale further so that we get a few more bales out of the field. That could be quite entertaining. Um, 
But if you've, in, I mean, if you've enjoyed this episode, please head down below and give me a like. And if you really enjoyed it, please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.